most people uh, don't realize that uh, you know neuroscience and kind of neurology, uh, empirical research uh, has an awful lot of you know interesting and important things to say about consciousness and, and free will. The course subject wise was free will and then consciousness, and. I was mainly trying to get across the meat and potatoes framework for the classical free will debate in my segment of the free will course. And in particular, how it is that people have tried to reconcile free will, the existence of free will, with determinism. And in the consciousness side, I was mostly trying to get people on board with how philosophers think about consciousness, and then the beginnings of an idea of how people think consciousness could arise even if all stuff is really physical stuff and governed by, at base, the same physical laws. We have the ability to let you know these freshman students do actual kind of neuroscience experiments uh, with, with this magnet facility where they can image uh, activity inside people's brains. They get to read a paper that came out one year ago uh, that has, that's certainly thought-provoking in terms of uh, our conceptions of, of free will. And then what they do in the lab is they design the next step in you know the experimental program you know, so it's a completely novel experiment that they're that they're doing this is a, a really unique opportunity as uh, as a freshman just the idea that we can generate original data in this field neuroscience is kind of the area where we can start to kind of get an empirical answer uh, if one exists as to whether free will exists or not it's going to be freaky when we start being able to see very predictive earlier states of people's brains for actions that are actually important. Well, one sort of implication that general brain scans might have is they might give us more information about the roots of our moral judgments. Um, this is controversial, but there is some, yeah, yeah. some evidence that yeah. you can sometimes debunk or partially debunk a moral intuition by finding out how it came about. Uh, and maybe, and this is just speculation now, uh, maybe finding out that intuitions come about in a certain way could influence how seriously we take the intuitions. On the free will end, people have argued for a long time that to the extent that you understand where it is that someone's uh, inclination to perform an action, either good or bad, comes from, when you start to understand in detail where that's coming from, then you become less inclined to blame and praise them for the action. Both the philosophy and the science are, are very accessible in the course. Uh, I mean, it's not easy material, but it's certainly um, accessible to both types of students. I don't feel like they're in any way dumbing down the material at all. We're getting it very directly from the latest journals, the latest publishings in the fields, and it, it does feel like we're on the cutting edge. And I mean, the fact that the professors are sitting down to learn as well says that, I think. From my point of view, uh, you know, interaction with, with philosophers is, is really important because when you're dealing with these, these kind of more nebulous questions of, of what is free will, what is, what is consciousness, um, the typical reaction of, of most scientists is to uh, be unclear on how to define those things and what the, the basic facts about free will and consciousness are. And so scientists then are inclined to kind of dismiss uh, certainly dismiss the importance of, of uh, asking questions about it, sometimes even dismiss the phenomena uh, itself. If you want to know what's the connection between what neurons are doing and the conscious state, you need to be clear on what the conscious state is. One thing that sparked the idea for the entire course, frankly, was this uh, Gardner grant idea. Mm. So this thought of magic. It's kind of this intellectual venture capital fund having to do with ideas that are magic in various ways, and I thought magic. And then I remembered this old Wittgenstein quote about uh, to the effect that there's a certain sort of magic when you raise your hand. Uh, I mean, and it is does seem kind of like magic. It's just a magic. You, know, you think, okay, hand go up, and then it does. And I think the only reason it doesn't always seem like magic is you're just so used to it. It's not that much less amazing feeling than if you just think, oh, you know, table go up, and it, yeah. it goes up.